Hi friends, are you wondering what to plant in your garden this November? Well, stick around because I'm gonna share with you what vegetables you can start, the projects to get done, and a special tip that will help you get the most out of your garden. Petrina here with Homegrown Florida. You may be aware by now that I am not in Florida right now. I'm actually on a cross country trip to Washington State in my RV. I planted my entire fall garden and then totally abandoned it. I know, it sounds really crazy, but I have done this before. Many times, in fact, so it is actually possible to have a big garden and then go on a long vacation without losing all your plants. I will lose some, I know that, but some are going to do very well. And I can confirm that this is happening from my security cameras where I can see lots of new growth. If you didn't get a chance to see the videos I did before I left showing how I did a full garden teardown and planting, I'm going to add them to the end of this video. And as you are now aware, since I am not at home, I had to take a pause on the free seed giveaways, but I have come up with a very cool giveaway that I will be doing once I return, and I can promise you that it's very good. I'm gonna keep it a secret for now, but I promise it will be well worth it. So make sure to keep tuning in at the beginning of each month so you don't miss it. If you're new to the channel, I am in Florida in zone 9A. If you're south of me, this video is gonna give you a little bit of a head start, and if you're north of me, then this will help remind you of anything you might have missed planting. A lot of the seeds we started last month in the garden are gonna be pretty similar to what we're gonna be starting this month. We are getting pretty close to our first expected frost date, so we need to stick to our cool season crops and leave the warm season crops behind us. That doesn't mean you need to pull your plants yet. I just let mine go until the first frost kills them out. So let's start with what you can be starting from seed this month. So that is gonna be beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, Chinese cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, collards, kale, kohlrabi, lettuce, mustard, onions, peas, radishes, spinach, Swiss chard, and turnips. If you are in the deep south Florida, you can probably safely add things like potatoes, green beans, corn, tomatoes, peppers, and squash. But that is only for those zones that are completely frost free. Central and North Florida friends, don't do it. It's not gonna be a happy time in the garden for you. We do get frost. So by the time the plants are mature and start putting on fruit, you will get a frost and it will wipe the plants completely out. Take my advice and save yourself some heartache. I have been there, I have done it. <laughs> Just wait just a tiny bit longer on those because spring is right around the corner and it will be here before you know it. So as you can see, we have a lot of things that we can grow at this point. Don't forget to be succession planting. Put a reminder on your phone or in your calendar to plant new seeds every two weeks. That way you have plenty of harvest coming in and backup plants if anything doesn't take well. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below. You'll be the first to know whenever I release a new video packed with gardening tips tricks or inspiration. So go ahead, give that bell a little tap. Now let's jump right into the projects for this month. I mentioned this last month, but I wanted to bring it up again, which is harvesting your sweet potatoes. If for no other reason, Thanksgiving is coming up and if you want actual sweet potatoes on the table, you want to get those harvested this week. So that way they have two weeks to cure, which is when they actually become sweet. You don't have to pull them all if you don't want to, but make sure you have at least a few from your harvest for that big meal and get them cured in your garage for two weeks. You can always pull the rest of them later before any frost come. Another thing you will want to get done this month is to transplant your onion seedlings. Or if you didn't start them by seed, make sure you get your hands on some onion starts, which are just baby onion plants. Last year I got mine from Dixondale Farms and I really liked them. The only thing that was odd was I had a handful of them go to seed, which should not happen with onion starts since they are a biennial plant and I was on year one with these plants. So they shouldn't have produced seeds, but they did. Must have been stress. But Dixondale Farm was great. They had a sampler pack for short day onions, which is the kind we need down here in the south since our number of daylight hours is shorter than our garden friends up north. If you get a long day or an intermediate day onion, you will not get a bulb. 
they will just grow into giant green onions and I'm speaking from experience here. I have a few favorite varieties of short day onions like Gran X, which is another name for the sweet Vidalia onion. Um, then there's Red Creole and the Texas Early White. Here's a reason why I like these variety. The red one lasts a long time in storage. The white one gets pretty big and it's a pretty mellow onion. And it goes without saying that Granex or Vidalia are just about the best tasting onions on the planet. Maybe I'm biased, but they are amazing. <laughs> Once you get your start or when you get ready to transplant your seedlings, just pull them apart from the others and stick your finger down into the soil about two inches and then just slide that seedling down into that hole. Press the soil back together to hold the seedling upright. Onion seedlings seem like delicate little plants with their little wispy leaves, but these guys are very tough. You can mess with the roots. You can dry them out. You can cut the leaves. They will bounce back so well. Just tough little plants. <laughs> when you plant them, make sure you pick a place in your garden that won't be in the way. I always have these great plans to interplant them around other veggies to take advantage of space and to deter bugs, but I always end up crowding them out and some die off and I don't get the yield I was hoping for. So this year I'm dedicating a bed to my garlic and onions and I'm not putting any other plant in there. They're gonna take till spring to harvest, so I'll be dedicating that bed to those plants until May or June. It's a long time to dedicate to just one vegetable, but I'm determined to have a really good onion year this year. Now let's discuss the special tip for the month. This one is very exciting, but you need to have some patience to pick the best time this month or possibly even next month. It is time to start planting our garlic. I highly recommend that you wait until you see a nice, good cold front coming through where the nighttime temperatures drop into at least the 40s. This might be the end of November all the way to the end of December, but it should happen between now and then. Last year, we didn't get a good cold front until Christmas, and it was record-breaking cold. That's when I planted. Uh, in fact, last year had a lot of crazy weather. I guess every year does. I don't know. <laughs> Once that temperature drop occurs, remove your garlic from the fridge where it has been patiently waiting since August. The fridge is necessary to vernalize the garlic, which is just a fancy way of saying they're going to get cold treatment. Vernalization is necessary to ensure that the garlic's bulb comes spring. Six weeks should be good enough, but I like to go as long as 12 weeks if I have the opportunity. So this ensures that they don't break fertilization and then not get the bulb, which is a common problem when you're growing garlic in a warm place like Florida. So if you didn't put them in your refrigerator, put them in right now so that that way you can get them in you know, in about six weeks from now, that'll put you right at the middle of December um, and you could still potentially get that bulbing. When you pull your garlic out, break the cloves apart, but leave the paper wrapping on each clove. Don't fully peel them. Then plant them pointy side up about five to six inches deep. Make sure your soil is very well fertilized. If you're using a granular fertilizer, go ahead and put that down into the bed this week so it has some time to break down to be ready for when you plant them later in the month. Last year, I learned that homemade compost is one of the best things that you can do to fertilize garlic. I didn't use half the fertilizer last year as I did the year before, and the only difference was that I put three to four inches of homemade compost down. The bagged compost isn't the same unless you're getting something like Vermont composting or you bought compost from a local nursery and it's been made. Black cow doesn't really cut it here. Then just water it in and cover it in one to two inches of mulch. Once they break the surface, keep mulching. I like to use grass clippings, but you can use pretty much anything. Leaf litter, wood chips, paper, <laughs> anything. You want to keep adding it because as we move from winter to spring, things heat up very fast. So the heavy mulch you've been adding will keep them cool once the hot weather, weather hits. If you want to watch a couple more of my videos, I'm going to pop those up right here. You can check those out between now and my next upload. Happy gardening, guys.